Welcome back. And we're moving into our second conversation for today, a very important conversation. Uh, we have with us representatives of the Ministry of Human Development in Galen University. The project is called Youth Rise, Resiliency in Inclusive Social Empowerment. And the specific project was a suicide prevention training. We have with us on set Sharice Ferguson, who is the Youth Rise Project Coordinator through the Ministry of Human Development. We have Paul Witte, who is the Clinical Supervisor for the Community Counseling Center for the Community Rehabilitation Department. And we have Dr. Eve Aird, who is the Provost at Gillen University. Good morning and welcome, and thank you for being here. Good morning. Thanks for having so us. Of course, nice to have you. Uh, very <coughs> important topic that we've got coming up. Uh, very uh, something that folks, of course, should take heed of. Uh, Dr. Aird, talk to us about uh, the project. Well, as you know, we had in, in, in the San Ignacio, Western Cayo area where I live, mm -hmm. we've had a lot of teen suicides over the past several years. My son he was not a teenager, but um, in 2010, he took his life. Um, I've been a high school, I was a high school principal for six years and I was acutely aware of some of the problems young people have um, having their lives. And last year we had three young people who took their lives. Um, after the third suicide, I called uh, friends of mine at the Citadel University, people that I know through the Quebec organization, and I said, we need to have a suicide prevention workshop. Would you assist us with this? And immediately they said, yes, we would. And Dr. Larry Daniel, the Dean of the School of Education at the Citadel, and I wrote a grant proposal to Quebec for a small grant to bring in Dr. Guy Lagan to, to, please, to do the workshop with Kendra Hoyt, who is uh, the life coach and counselor at Galen University. I spoke about the project with Judith Alpucha. I just said, Ms. Alpucha, I'm going to be doing this. Is there anything that I should be looking out for? And she says, oh, this is very important. Human development wants to work with you on it. And so we, it, was, it was just, I guess, synergy, <laughs> um, divine providence that everything came together. Um, and we, Kendra and Guy Legan, at, at the Citadel got together along with uh, Joe Hendricks and Paul and they put together the workshop and over the two days in San Ignacio and two days in Dangriga we had 70 people who are all working on the front line with youth at high risk of self-harm and committing suicide. Alarmingly I've recently learned that there's a suicide attempt every five days in Belize that is reported. Wow. That's that's that's, that's tough. Now, it's interesting that you said there was a synergy automatically with the CEO of the Ministry of Human Development. Um, I think perhaps part of the challenge in the country is one, we don't, we don't feel so comfortable talking about mental health. Yeah. Um, and two, there's a lot of mystery and misunderstanding and looming questions that happen after a, a successful suicide. Um, and I think people don't always know how to approach the topic at mm -hmm. all. Uh, in terms of when you decided to have the partnership with the Ministry of Human Development, how did you decide who you wanted to be able to train in this particular area? When, when I first um, conceived of the workshop at, at Galen University, and this is something that I've wanted to do for a long time, yeah. but um, when I first conceived of the project, just because of the, the suicides that happened in Canada were all high school students for the yeah. most part. Um, I thought that I would work that we would work with high, uh, high school counselors and where schools don't have counselors, the teachers or the administrators who are in um, who are charged with looking after the well-being of children. Yeah. So I thought I would just work with high school counselors. but when the Ministry of Human Development came in and said we, we are going to support this, and Joe came up and, and sat down talking with us about it. We realized that, yes, we will, and we did invite somebody from every high school in Cayo and, um, and Dangriga, and the Dangriga area. Um, and we did get people from Toledo and San Pedro coming in. It, it was that important to them. But yeah. we realized that there were a lot more people who were on the front lines and some of the suicide, people who are at risk, 
are not necessarily all high school students. Mm -hmm. And so um, we just expanded it. There were police officers, uh, yeah. special poli um, special what, what do you call it? Special <laughs> um, <laughs> and community, uh, community uh, social workers. There were people who are members of churches and work with youth groups yeah. and do counseling in their so churches. So there was a natural interest. A natural interest, yes. Cherise, let's talk about the human development side and uh, yes. specifically Youth Rise, the project that you are coordinating. Right. Um, like you mentioned, the Youth Rise, Rise stands for Resilience and Inclusive Social Empowerment Project. And it is a scale up from the YCT project, which okay. um, I've come here before when yeah. we had the launch of the or the groundbreaking of the LIRC, mm -hmm. um, Lake Independence Resource Center. So this is a scale up to the YCT project, particularly focusing on communities in Dangriga and um, Kaya, but particularly San Ignacio and Santa Elena. Mm -hmm. um, so from consultations and you know research showing that those two districts were the second and third highest with um, situations with youth at risk um, increase mm -hmm. in persons you know becoming conflict with the law and so forth so um, the youth rise components mirrors some of the project components from the YCT as well including the transformation programs um, which has some literacy and numeracy some adaptive life skills programs and it also um, includes enhancement of therapeutic response mm. component in addition to um, wraparound services or family support services in those two districts. Okay. So this um, training that we partnered with Galen to do was um, a part of the enhancement of therapeutic response. Because yeah. the focus of that component is particularly to we will be engaging or hiring professional counselors mm -hmm. and also um, doing a series of training for social workers and residential staff mm -hmm. um, within the Ministry of Human Development to you know, build capacity in those areas and then expanding to broader, you know, other community members, other social service providers yeah. um, so that we have a, a wider reach. So that's where the fit or you know, the synergy yeah. came about with the ministry and Gillen University for this particular training. I mean, ideally, any person who has contact with young people should have this training right. uh, in an ideal mm -hmm. world. But you're starting off trying to get some frontline personnel involved right from now. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul, talk to us a bit from the mental health side. Um, you work with the Community Counseling Center. It offers free counseling to the public. Yes, it does. Um, it's located on Freetown Road, Road in Belize City. Yes, okay. Freetown okay. Road, right above the deck. Third floor. Uh -huh. um, yeah. So I, I think it's important for people to know that because there are yes, places absolutely. they can access mm -hmm. service. How does one develop the skills to be able to recognize what is normal teenage or young people angst versus suicidal tendencies? So, I, th I mean, I think that the most important skill there is, is empathy and reaching out and trying to understand. Is yeah. trying to um, understand that development, childhood development, adolescent development, and even moving into adulthood has a lot of very difficult pieces. And um, there are many circumstances that can lead a person to, to start contemplating it, to start yeah. thinking about suicide as a solution to their problems and they see it as the only solution that's available to them so to understand that that people get to that point in a lot of different ways and that there's something to do about it T but to to develop that mindset i think is is the most important skill mm -hmm. first yeah and then um one of the things that they really worked on at the training was developing a little bit of of assuredness or trust in yourself to ask those questions directly yeah. to actually have that conversation with somebody with a little bit you know it takes a lot of strength and it takes um, a lot of compassion to be ready for the answer that you might get when you yeah. ask somebody if they're contemplating suicide so understanding and a little bit of um, capacity development or, or trust in yeah. um, their own personal abilities to to handle that conversation mm -hmm. it's not something that's easy to talk about but yeah. it's something that's important to address but uh, Paul uh, it, it's striking to me and this is one of the reasons why I was looking forward to uh, this segment um, from for, for somebody like you who have been out who've been talking uh, especially to 
uh, to a lot of people. What do you think, especially here in Belize, is the problem? Do you say that? It, uh, would you say that it, uh, parents and how we deal with the children, uh, in terms of how we raise them, what do you think would be the number one problem in terms of somebody uh, growing up? Then again, having problems and thinking, you know what? The only way I could get out of this is by committing suicide. There are so many different situations. There are so many different mm -hmm. cultures and, um, and places in Belize where we see this happening. It would be very difficult to say, to kind of put your finger on one problem. Mm -hmm. um, stigmatizing mental health definitely seems to be an issue mm -hmm. where people hold on to their depression. They hold on to the pain that they have, the psychological issues, mm -hmm. and they feel that there's not really um, people to talk to about it or ways to go about addressing it. So they might find themselves progressing to a point where it has grown so much inside of them that yeah. it has gotten to such a large extent that it feels so overwhelming yeah. that there's not really a way out of it. So mm -hmm. with all of these different different things that might affect a person to start thinking about suicide. I think that the biggest factor in Belize at the moment is the acceptance of mental health issues, the acceptance of the fact that all people find themselves in need of support at some time in their life. Mm -hmm. And some people are lucky enough to have that in their community or mm -hmm. their family, but some people do not. And that mm -hmm. I think significantly impacts um, the degree to which they think about um, mm -hmm. suicide, suicide yeah. attempts. I, I think that young peop that people need to know, but especially young persons who are troubled about something, they need, they need to know that it is okay to say that I have a problem and I need help, that I need to talk to somebody. And the person mm -hmm. that I need to talk to may not necessarily be my mom or my dad mm -hmm. or the pastor at the church. I might need to talk to a, a mental health provider yeah. who is simply someone who is trained to help me to work through the psychological yeah. and or emotion, emotional issues that I have. Um, I, schools need to have access. Every, high, every, every school in Belize, mm -hmm. whether it's a primary school or a high school or a tertiary institution, they all need to have trained counselors on staff and uh, we need to be able to address issues in the schoolyard, in the classrooms, yeah. such as bullying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that uh, cause unnecessary distress yeah. upon um, the young people that we have in our care. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that as a, as a nation, we just need to welcome yeah. and receive mental health um, care as a necessary part of our, our, our lives. Um, I, I don't watch the television news every night because it's just filled. I know you have to report yeah. Yeah. what's happening in the country, but I need to filter out some of the, the negative, you know, the child, children taking lives, children being killed, children being raped, mm -hmm. the corruption, everything that is reported daily. Mm -hmm. If I, I find that to be very stressful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, I always marvel at how, how, what it must, how that impacts young people mm -hmm. when they're hearing it and when they see the assault yeah. On, yeah. on other young people, how that impacts them. We look at the community of Santa Familia and the grief that they're going through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, such a beautiful girl killed for no apparent reason. Still can't find a reason. We don't yeah. know why. Yeah. Um, that child's life was in front of her. How are her friends dealing with that? Yeah. Is anybody providing, reaching out to them? Yeah. Well, do and we have an them intervention, society intervention mechanism I know, in place? I know are we from, aware? I know from my experience at Sacred Heart College where I was principal, mm -hmm that when our school went through a crisis, when one of our teachers died, the high school community came and supported us. And um, I had counselors who came from UB, from other high schools in the country, mm -hmm. and who spent two or three days with my teachers and my students, most importantly, my students, helping them to work through yeah. what happened. Yeah. And I know that um, this, the same reaching out to other schools does happen. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know if that just happens 
within the okay. school system. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. the network that principals create with each other. <coughs> um, I don't know if that is happening. Yeah. I don't think it is happening in community or other in the larger community. Yeah. Yeah. Let me, let what? me, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to mention that one of the, um, as the next steps they're looking mm -hmm. forward is to um, partner with uh, Ministry of Health yeah. for future, because I've been informed of an uh, um, upcoming um, event or, or forum where they want to look at national response yeah. to not just suicide, but other, you know, mental Major health trauma. issues or, or trauma, yeah. traumatic situations that occur. And so that forms the, like part of the next steps or the plans for more of a rather than a community based um, response, you know, just within the school system or um, that there's a in, formalized in, right system formalized place. system yeah. in place and including all the stakeholders yeah. that would have some um, contact with 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 persons at different stages or at different points because yeah. mental mental health. Um, or Ministry of Health might have their assessments and so forth that they would deal with. Yeah. Um, the Ministry of Human Development have the social workers that maybe would do more of that wrap around and that yeah. support, you know, to, to work with the families or, or individuals beyond yeah. just that yeah. initial point. So all the stakeholders would then, you know, come together for more of a national and formal response mechanism. Yeah. Let, let's take it back to some of the information that came came out of, of the training because when we talk about mental health we can go into so many right. areas and it is important but there's some very specific misconceptions that people have about suicide um, and uh, the depression that may lead to suicide. We've spoken about it before on the show that people expect a person who will commit suicide to look like they were going to crying, you know, isolated, yeah. uh, sad, like depressingly sad mm -hmm. all over the place. Is this the case? How, how does one notice when a person has suicidal tendencies? There are, um, and it was discussed at the training, there are some warning signs. Um, yeah. Depression is one of them, really low mood, loss of interest in things. Um, and kind of withdrawing from people are certainly things that, that we have to, to look out for. And um, as a counselor, you know, you're always looking out for a language of, of hopelessness and helplessness, which is something that um, was discussed in the training a Hopelessness lot. Hopelessness and helplessness. Hopeless. Right. And it's that it's coming to a point where they feel like there is no okay. better solution, no, yeah. no road out of it. But because everybody is different. Everybody is very different in the way that they express their emotions, in the way that they communicate the issues that mm -hmm. they're going through. Yeah. There is not one set profile of a person who's going to commit suicide. Okay. Um, so that's why I think it was so important when we were getting together to look at this as a community health issue, to look at the yeah. people in the community who would be in a position to, to respond in a sensitive way. Mm -hmm. um, so. Um, some other signs that you look for is um, sometimes people start to give things away. Mm. Sometimes, you know, there's, they'll be in a very low mood for a while and then all of a sudden they start, um, everything is fine and you wonder mm -hmm. why, you wonder what happened. But um, really the sign that you're looking for is when you sit down with them and ask them what's wrong and yeah. you can have that conversation to say, do you think about suicide? Do you think about hurting yourself? And yeah. they say, yes that is the biggest indication that, that they're thinking about it. And that's what we need to come down to, is having those direct conversations yeah. with people. Um, that's a tough question to yeah. ask, and yeah. if you're a parent especially, but also, how do you prepare yourself for the answer? I'll, I'll tell you one thing I've heard uh, over the course of the years is, oh, they say those things for attention. That's, that's just young yeah, people. They say they're gonna kill themselves because they just, they're so dramatic about mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. um, is there a danger in having this mentality that, that we kind of dismiss when people say uh, that they will kill themselves, or especially a young person or a teenager? I feel like the biggest danger in that attitude is that people do need attention, mm -hmm. that people <laughs> do need that thing to say, oh, they're just asking for attention. That's like, well, that might be the case. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, that person might, might benefit from learning better ways to ask for attention. Mm -hmm. But in this case, in this situation, if that's how they're asking for it, then that still puts you in a position 
to respond. figure out how to, to give it to them, to mm -hmm. say, yeah. if it's attention that you need, if it's affection, if it's support, if it's friendship, yeah. if it's guidance, those things are available to you yeah. before a point where you have to say, I'm thinking about taking my own life. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, mm -hmm. right. You know, Dr. Erdi, let me, let me bring you in in terms of uh, your own personal experience here. And, you know, kudos to you in not only having uh, taken what has been the most difficult thing, um, but also taken action as a result. You saw, mm -hmm. we've seen several suicides mm -hmm. uh, take place in Cayo. You saw it and you decided to do something about it. What has the experience been like for you? Um, I have felt that God doesn't bring you to a place if He's not going to bring you through that, mm -hmm. through that tough place that He takes you to. Yeah. I think that um, I was able to see mm -hmm. some of the troubles that young people go through. Um, I, I had a I guess I had a heightened awareness, and when I was principal of this of the high school, mm -hmm. I was able to ensure that there was a staff mm -hmm. and uh, who would support our people, our, our children when they needed it. Um, so I, I, I guess I felt empowered to be able to do. And I'm glad that I was in a position that I could do something. Mm -hmm. um, I've not been able to get through what I without praying about it almost daily and having a supportive network. Um, and now I think that I, in, in November or October, whenever the last suicide in Kaya happened, um, being, just being glad that I could pick up the phone and call the friends at the Citadel University to reach okay. out to the Consortium on Belize yeah. Education Corporation and say, would you support this with funding? Um, being very thankful for the network that I'm able to, that we were able to create with the Ministry of Human Development and working with Joe Hendricks and Paul and Charisse mm -hmm. and Kendra mm -hmm. um, to put together the workshop for the, and, and, and for me just being able to go to, because there was a point this year that I was so overwhelmed that I thought I would have to plan a thing on my own and yeah. I just went to Kendra Hoyt, my, mm -hmm. our counselor, and I said, Kendra, I want to do this. Can you help me? And Kendra says, don't worry. Yeah. And she took it over. Um, I think that we have, Belize has a lot of resources, both locally, um, amongst our own people. And through COBEC, we have a wealth of resources with some 30-odd universities across the United States and now Canada mm -hmm. and the UWI, that when we try to expand the training and, um, and create that network, um, and fill some of the gaps that the participants identified yeah. that need to be filled. Mm -hmm. um, like for example, creating a national hotline and training peer counselors to work that hotline. Yeah. We need that. Yeah. We have the resources that we can lead on. Where we don't have the expertise in Belize, we can get that expertise yeah. very easily mm -hmm. through yeah. Quebec um, and other partnerships. Yeah. Where do we find ourselves uh, rolling out uh, this training next. A uh, reason why I'm asking that is because I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I don't remember if you did mention it while we were, before we get on, before we got on, but it's alarming to me and I think the public should know that every five Please. days yeah. somebody is actually attempting, attempting and that's to. that's what we know about. Yeah. Those that's what, the, this is what we know, yes. Yeah. But uh, what about that we don't? What about those that we don't? Yes. Do we find ourselves in another training in another part of this country? This is very important. I think, um, I think that the training, ha this training has to be rolled out nationally. It has to be taken to other parts of Belize. Um, and we are happy to do that along with the Ministry of Human Development and the Ministry of Health. Mm -hmm. um, I know that the High School Counselors Association often partner with the Ministry of um, the Mental Health Association. Okay, yeah which I think comes out of the okay. Ministry of Health. Yeah. Um, and some high school counselors are members of that association. Yeah. So um, I think that it needs to be, my, my Lebanese perspective, it needs to be taken nationally. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not a one shot deal. For us at, at Galen, and when we discussed this with Joe and, and Paul um, and Guy Ilega, this 
this was not the be all and the end all. Absolutely, we need to continue. Yeah. We need to and yes, the training that the right. folks who have started, yeah. we need to build on that because this was, I would say, um, would I be right in saying it? It was introductory. That there are other yeah. skills that we need to build on, um, that we need to develop. Yes, yeah. and um, more work to develop that response network right. that yeah. has multiple layers. Not only right. the, the first response, but the good follow through, so you don't right. find yourself in the same position mm -hmm. over and over again. And we need to have the conversation. It, right. It's mm -hmm. a hard conversation to mm -hmm. have. That's I think reality, yeah. within your own homes, within your school, within your classroom. Um, and in the wider public as we're doing here. I, I want to ask, obviously we we're part of the training. There's a lot that we know, there's a lot that we think we know, and there's a lot we never really put into our mind before. What has been some of the eye-opening uh, takeaways from the training that you really would want the wider public to be able to be aware of? One of the things that really struck me was how personal this issue was for so many people. It was not just one or two in, in the training, but so many people had a personal experience with it and had encountered kind of the really painful after effects, the really painful um, response, and just the amount of, of personal loss that really does yeah. occur. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In, in so many people when mm -hmm. a suicide does happen in a mm -hmm. community. So the, the real face of it mm -hmm. was, was the eye-opening piece for me. Was mm -hmm. And then, you know, that means that we found ourselves doing a training that was immediately relevant to so many people right there. Mm -hmm. That it was not some uh, hypothetical thing or like training for some issue that might occur sometime in the future. But yeah. Right when we started talking about it, people were able to say, oh, this is what I saw, or um, mm -hmm. I was in this experience a couple of months ago, and I didn't know what to do. So mm -hmm. um, seeing that it does happen, that people are having to respond to this issue, whether or not they have training, mm -hmm. yeah. um, mm -hmm. was kind of one of the, the things that struck me most. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would also say that just looking at who, who all exists, the skills or the personnel that, mm -hmm. you know, within our different communities, like you said, it was broad, a mm -hmm. bit of social workers, school counselors, community members, um, persons from churches who work, you know, within their communities. Mm -hmm. So that interest, like you said, because wanting to know how to mm -hmm. address and, and if we know of all these persons who are working within their communities, then that even helps to, to as we move forward, to create a, a network. Mm -hmm. It's not like you, you know, would try to wonder, well, who can we invite or who can we include? Persons came out, you know, so it's just like 70 more people that they, whether it's Human Development, Ministry of Health, Galen, you know, can, can partner with their work with to mm -hmm. build that network. It, it exists. Yeah. So there is an opportunity there for us to really plan and move forward for um, more of a, that national um, system of, yeah. of responding to. I, I didn't actually sit in the training myself, but on the, on the second day, the first day of the training in San, um, San Ignacio, I was at a workshop in Corozal, but on the second day I came back to speak with the, with the participants and welcome them. Um, and one of the things that struck me is one, one participant saying, you know, Dr. Aird, um, from where I work, and she, she works at a uh, hostel for young women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She says, last week was one of the worst weeks of my life. There were so many things that the girls brought to me, and I just didn't know what to do and how to help them. Mm -hmm. I felt helpless. So. But after just being in the training for one day, she felt that she was getting some answers and mm -hmm. some pointers in the in a direction that she could take mm -hmm. and beginning to develop a skill set when, when i looked at the report that um that uh, guy Lega, um, produced um a number of the participants said just the role playing that they did the role playing was so intense mm -hmm. and so real mm -hmm. that they they had to uh, that helped them that gave them a real feel yeah. for the work that that for the approaches that they need mm -hmm. to take yeah. mm -hmm. in dealing with some of this. Um, but I, I think for me the big takeaway is, as Sherry said, it's the, it's the interest and the, and the recognition that there's a problem 
and we have seven the people who cared enough to take two days out of their lives. One young woman um, that I know about actually took two days vacation from her job so she could participate in this. And yeah. she's that a counselor. Shows, yeah. And but she is a counselor at her place. You know, it is, it is extremely important. And, uh, you know, but were there any part of this training whereby uh, it was thought how to deal with a family if something like this would occur in the family? How do you approach uh, parents? How do you approach it? Because I would think that the mindset would be that we have failed. How do you approach a family who have been in a situation like this? So the, the main focus of the training was suicide prevention. prevention. Mm -hmm. um, so we, uh, the, most of the content was focused on risk assessments, safety planning, how to try to make somebody as safe as possible. Yeah. The response that, um, that a community could have to a family in support of somebody who had, who had completed suicide yeah. was discussed, but due to due to the depth and the importance of, of all the other prevention-based issues. Yeah. Um, I think that would have to be kind of fall into one of the areas of advanced training. Of yeah. Further training. Okay. <laughs> um, That's one of the gaps. Yeah. It is very much needed, yeah. but um, this first training was mostly about prevention. It was yeah. mostly about recognizing the signs and um, intervening and yeah. doing yeah. everything that you can. Now, if we look at the uh, persons that we know of, uh, because we don't always report, we don't report on it in the media. Um, the persons who have completed suicide, it, it's a wide array of, of backgrounds that we're talking about. We talk young, we talk older, we talk uh, those in school, we, th we talk about people who've been bullied, people who were popular, people who were poor. Pe I mean, it, it could just be anybody. Mm -hmm. With such a wide demographic as your potential tar uh, as your potential victims, how do you start that risk assessment? What I, I'm sure parents at home, teachers uh, uh, as well, are looking at this and saying, "What do I need to look for? I would never want this to happen to my child, to my student, to my n neighbor. Mm -hmm. What do I need to look for?" Changes. It comes down to changes because. Um, Everybody is going to be connected to other people. There are, you know, there are very few people who don't have some sort of social connection. So they're known by somebody. Somebody knows who they are, knows what their normal kind of responses are, what they look like when, when things are going okay, when they're healthy. Mm -hmm. And when you start to see those pieces of their personality or pieces of their, their normal functioning, start to slip away and start to kind of get muted or quieted down and um, and that person just doesn't seem like themselves anymore. I think those are the things to look for because everybody's going to start off at a different place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so it is the people who know them in their lives who are going to be the most able to, to notice yeah. when something is wrong, when they don't seem to be able to enjoy anything or connect to to other people in a meaningful way to say, hey, yeah. what's going on? You, you know, this isn't like you. Yeah. What's, what's happening in your life? Mm -hmm. So I think that is... Anything is out of the norm of their normal behavior. Right. And we don't need to jump to, to assuming the worst every time, mm -hmm. but to have that conversation, to start that conversation to say, how are you? You know, like, what's happening? You seem like you're really dealing with something. Do you want to talk about it? Do you have somebody in your life to help support you? And to open that conversation with people, I think, is, mm -hmm. um, is the first step. It's always the first step. Mm -hmm. Any other uh, pieces of information that came out of the training or from this experience that you'd like to share with the public? No? that we now have a, a group of at least 70 persons who have gotten, uh, as you pointed out, an introductory, right. um, because it is such a complex issue yeah, right. um, that there is a lot of information uh, that people can be able to get, but now you have people who are looking for the signs, mm -hmm. at least. I think the most encouraging part of the training for me is we went in knowing that a network needed to be developed, yeah. a larger response framework needed to be kind of constructed to 
to assist in um, in the response, in the community response. Yeah. And um, the most encouraging part was I, for one, came away thinking that this had been a good step towards that goal, towards the development of a community that was not only aware of the issue and aware of the warning signs, but equipped with some tools in what to do into some intervention techniques. Okay. And uh, of course, it has been rolled out in Cayo and Dangriga, um, and you have hopes of being able to take it uh, to all over the country. Right. Okay. Well, we want to thank you for stopping in and sharing the details of this. I think it is absolutely important. One final note, of course, is that there is counseling, free counseling available mm -hmm. for people across the country. Um, and with the through the project, like I mentioned, mm -hmm. we'll be hiring three um, new counselors. Yeah. Four, one for Belize City, um, Dangriga, and Cayo. Yeah. Um, I know it seems like we're just you know, focusing on those three areas, but that's the area's focus for the project. Yeah. Um, and with, you know, much success, then there's always opportunity for additional resources to be provided so that we can expand to the other parts of the country. Yeah. So um, with, you know, having a counselor in the different districts and, you know, it's one more resource to, to work with, not just within the Ministry of Human Development and their different units, but mm -hmm outside of you know so another um, yeah. opportunity for additional yeah. services mm -hmm. so are there are the psychiatric nurse practitioners, practitioners in that all are the public clinics in right. belize there is the counseling center yes. uh, right. in belize city mm -hmm. and these are all places where people can access free counseling okay. right. um, to be able to get through whatever obstacle they're facing or if they need a little bit of coaching through mm -hmm. a challenge right, right? right. That's okay right. Well, thank you all for stopping in. This is a wonderful initiative. And I think, you know, as we said, this is the start. We need to be more comfortable speaking about it. We need to be more comfortable talking with the kids about it um, and face that this is a reality. And if we don't talk about it, it will continue. Right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we'll be talking to Ernestine Carballo about her upcoming uh, launch of her new video. Stay tuned.